Hi everyone and welcome back to Developer Soapbox. Today I want to show you a super quick and easy way of generating CRUD controllers, repositories, and database connections with the help of an awesome Visual Studio Code extension. So let's get started by opening up Visual Studio Code and going into the Extensions tab. There, search for Spring Boot Snippets. And select this one right here by Developer Soapbox and go ahead and install it. And yes, that is me, uh, Developer Soapbox, and I created this extension since I was started two things. Uh, I started writing t tedious boilerplate code for controllers and repositories, and because my memory sucks and I can't remember any database URLs every time I set up an application of properties uh, database connection, so I said, let, let me do this for myself and in case anyone else has the same uh, problems that I do. So let's go over both of these areas. Uh, to use the snippets for the first part, I do need to be inside of a Java uh, file, so let's let me go ahead and open a new file, and let's go ahead and change the file type to Java. Now that I have my Java file, I can simply start typing spring dash, and I can see my snippets. To create a controller, I'm just going to select this one, the CRUD controller, and hit enter, and which you can see generates a controller with all the methods uh, for all the CRUD actions already implemented. So all I have to do now is tab through the parameters and set them. So for example, let's say that we're creating a controller for a customer API. So I can tab through and set my package, tab and set my mapping resource. So in my case, I'll do customer, set my controller name. Let's pretend that I have a repository class named customer repo. The next parameter is the JPA entity class, which I'll set to customer. And look how awesome that is. It actually sets uh, it in multiple places. And lastly, um, it just needs the type of my customer entities ID. This would be the entity class property with the ID annotation. In my case, it's a long. And as you can see, our controller has a method for getting the entire collection of customers, for getting a customer by the ID, for getting, uh, for creating a customer, that's our post, for updating a customer, get, giving the ID, that's our put, and then lastly, deleting a customer given the ID. And let's say I want to create a repository for my entity. So I also have you covered there. So here I am in my Java file. And let me just start typing spring dash. And right here, you can see that I have CRUD repo. And very similar to the controller, I can just tap through the placeholders and set my values based on my particular project. I can also generate the skeleton for a JPA entity by doing spring dash and entity. And you can see that it generates just a skeleton for a JPA entity with a ID property already set up. And those are the snippets for Java files. But like I said, I, I have truly horrible memory and I can't remember JDBC connect strings. So this means that every time I need to put anything in my application.properties file, I have to Google it. So it's shameful, I know, but that's exactly why I created these snippets for that. So to show you, let me go ahead and open a new file. And I'm going to set the file type to Spring Boot Properties. So right here, this first one. And I can now start typing spring dash, and you can see options for all the major databases. So for example, if I select spring dash MySQL, you can see that not only do I have all the spring application properties that I need and don't have to remember anymore, but also my JDBC connect string, which I just have to update with my own connection properties, such as my, such as my connection uh, database host and database name. So that's pretty awesome, right? So you're probably thinking though, you know, application of properties that so five years ago, I'm a YAML guy or gal. Well, no problem since I got you covered there as well. So if I just, for example, switch my file type to spring properties YAML, I can do the same thing. So spring dash, let me do Oracle this time. And voila, there we go. So we have the same thing but now it's YAML, right? So I do support YAML as well. And you can just tap through the 
particular placeholders and set your database host, database name, username and password, and so on. You can probably tell by my other videos uh, that I'm a huge fan of Visual Studio Code. And this was actually my first uh, extension and it was really fun uh, learning how to make it. So if Visual Studio Code extensions development is something you'd like me to do a video on, uh, let me know in the comments below and I, I can definitely do that as well. If you enjoy using Visual Studio Code for Java development, but you're not sure uh, how to get started, I also do have a great video on the subject, which I'll link in the description. And if you're still confused about which extensions to download to get started with Spring Boot development, uh, specifically, I do have you covered there, there as well. So, so let's jump back to our extensions tab. And I'm going to type Spring Boot Developer Extension Pack. And this is another extension that I created, which is simply an extension pack with all the core extensions you need to get started with Spring Boot uh, development in Visual Studio Code. So it includes uh, the basic Java extension pack, the Pivotal pack. Uh, this right here is a uh, Java getter and setter generator, and then my own uh, extension, which I just showed you how to use. So are there any other uh, Visual Studio extensions that you think would make your life easier? So let me know in the comments below. And I hope you really enjoyed this video. And as always, stay safe and have an awesome day.